Making Differentiated Breakout Rooms Work, a step-by-step -step guide of manually creating and operating breakout rooms in live Zoom meetings. Video four of our five-part video series on differentiated breakout rooms, starting in three, two, one, Hey everyone, I'm Jessica and welcome to Being Classy. In this video, I will walk you through what differentiated breakout rooms would look like in a virtual learning online classroom, how to set up and operate a lesson that is differentiated and get students to self-assess and move through the content in tiered breakout rooms. I also want to give you a free quick reference guide for Zoom breakout rooms to use with your students. You can download the guide by clicking the link to my blog in the description below and clicking on the button that says download quick reference guide. Before we jump in, if you haven't seen the first three videos of this five part video series, you can find them on my channel. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe to stay up to date on this video series and the rest of my content. So in this video, let's look at how to make differentiated breakout rooms work in a live zoom class. First, if you have students' email addresses, you can pre-assign breakout rooms when scheduling a meeting. This would mean that students would have had already completed a self-assessment so you know which room the student is going to go into. But for this video, I'm going to show you how to manually put students into differentiated breakout rooms from the Zoom meeting. Now you can't have students in Zoom move themselves to breakout rooms right now. Zoom has spoken about this as a potential feature in future updates, but for now you can do a few workarounds to make this work. The one that I would always tend to do in my virtual rooms is by having students rename themselves to get moved to certain rooms. All right, so all participants are in one Zoom meeting. So here's the Zoom meeting with two students that we have, Mary and Peter. I'm the host, so I have the ability to move students to breakout rooms. So to get a differentiated breakout room lesson started, I would always start by having students complete the self-assessment using the rubric. If you haven't watched that video, be sure to check it out on how to create these solo self-assessment rubrics. So if you notice here on the screen, I have students following the directions to rename themselves either a one, two, or three, depending on how they're feeling with the learning objective. Once they rename themselves, I can then move them into the appropriate room. So how do we get students to rename themselves? You can do this in two ways. I'm going to stop sharing my screen to show you the two ways students can rename themselves. First, they can navigate to the three dots beside their video and click rename. They then can rename themselves as a one, two, or three. The other way that you can have students rename themselves is by clicking on the participant panel on the bottom of your screen and navigating over to the more button. Then students can rename themselves. Because I'm the host, I'm gonna keep my name the same. If you notice here, my student Mary and Peter have already renamed themselves based off of their self-assessment on the rubric. So I know that these students are moving to room one or room two. So I'm gonna navigate down to more on the bottom of my screen to create breakout rooms. For this, you need to manually assign the rooms. So I'm gonna click on manual and depending on how many students I have in my room will be how many breakout rooms I create. I may just create three if I have a small group of students. But if I have more than 25 students, I may need to create maybe two room ones, two room twos, and two room threes. So depending on your class size is how many rooms you'll make. So for the purpose of this, I'm gonna create two rooms. My breakout rooms are now here and I can assign my students to the right rooms. If I want to, I can rename the rooms, but for this, I want them to be room one, room two, and room three. So I'm gonna assign students to the correct breakout room. I'm gonna assign this student one to room one, and I'm going to assign this student two to room two. Now the reason I had students rename themselves is if, if I have 20 plus students in my room, I wanna make this quick and efficient. So having them rename themselves will put them in 
the correct order to automatically click through their boxes and put them into the rooms. I will then open up all the rooms. Students will have the opportunity to join the room. They'll be prompted to join the room and they will go into the differentiated breakout rooms. Now, as the meeting host, as the teacher, you have the option to navigate into the different rooms. So I noticed that some of my students are in the different breakout rooms and let's say I want to go check in on them. So I'm gonna go move myself to room two and check in on my students working in room two. So I'm now in room two with this student. Um, and then if I need to, if students are ready to move to another room, I can then go ahead and move students to the next room. So this is just a quick tutorial on how to get breakout rooms started for your differentiated breakout room lesson. If that's too much for you to do right now, you honestly could host this differentiated breakout room activity on a Google Slides or a Google Doc where students can complete the tiered learning objectives, the differentiated breakout room activity on a Google slide or a Google doc. This is a great idea for anyone who may have trouble or limited access to the breakout room capabilities in Zoom. I would simply do this by sharing the Google slide link with my students in the chat in Zoom for them to complete their activities. Thank you so much for watching video four of five of our differentiated breakout room series. Be sure to download the free quick reference guide for Zoom breakout rooms by clicking on the link below, navigating to my blog, and clicking on download quick reference guide. In the last video of this series, I'm going to walk you through how to create and operate differentiated breakout rooms with tiered learning objectives in Google Meets. And again, be sure to like and comment this video. Let me know how differentiated breakout rooms works for you, questions that you may have. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all of our video content at Being Classy. Thanks everyone.